Okay, what we have today is the uh, overview, or the first video of the uh, Voice of Music series Record Changer. In 1956, you had basically a choice of three record changers that you'll find, and that was uh, Webster Webcore, uh, Voice of Music, like this one, or Crescent, like was commonly used in RCA and uh, some Admiral and other brands. But anyway, we're going to focus today on this one. This is the VM1200 series, four-speed changer. This has the uh, mouse fur turntable, one of the last series that used the mouse fur before they went to a rubber platter. And uh, as far as these, these are a great one to learn on because they're not, uh, they're not difficult to a service they're not difficult to take apart and uh, you can you know you can repair them if something's wrong with them first thing I'm going to do you notice I have a styrofoam block here and the reason this block is here is to put over the spindle it's too late for this one because of careless handling the spindles broken off so that has to be replaced but anyway uh, even if it's broken I'll still do this I take this the styrofoam block and put it over the spindle to keep this try to keep the spindle from breaking off and then we're going to take the motor assembly out of here. I'm going to take this off just to show you. To take the motor assembly out, that's how I begin on these. Take the three screws, one, two, and then under the knob, pull the knob off, put it in your little parts bucket there, and take this nut off and two screws. Then, uh, depending on the model you have of the VM, uh, you may or may not have linkage between the uh, on off switch and the motor assembly and what that linkage does is removes the drive wheel from contact of the motor when it's in the off position this one did not use that but anyway after you have the screws off I untrap the wires under the I uncurl this with a pair of pliers so that this can be removed like this and then remove the wires from underneath the, cl the, the little uh, tangs here and remove it here. This is the switch. You remove this clip. It's a uh, notched spring clip and be careful you don't lose it. If you lose it you won't be able to hold the switch back in. When you remove this spring clip and the fiber board, which you also don't lose, it's important, underneath this is the power switch and the switch will, uh, matter of fact I think I can show you this, yeah you see right there, I'm going to work it from the other side, if I can, down here, hang on, see that, see the little gold thing, that's, that's the switch itself being activated by the linkage on the on-off switch. But anyway, after this uh, spring clip is taken off and this disc is taken out, the switch will slide up and out, and then you can take the entire motor assembly and wiring out and the uh, linkage out. And this is an interesting motor uh, uh, thing. Why they did this, I have no idea. Instead of having the drive wheel travel up and down to change speeds on the shaft of the motor, they shift the entire motor up and down, which is very strange to do. You'll see that it's got a scissors, scissors jack type thing here, and it's got a notched stepper. It makes this thing come up and down like this. And between the first plate here, right down under here but on this plate between the plate and the motor are the rubber motor mounts that you'll have to replace but anyway uh, it's just a strange design but hey that's the way they did it and it worked <clears throat> and now uh, we'll get into later on taking out the slider which is going to be necessary and uh, pulling out the transmission and so stand by this is only video one